Welcome back, guys. It's Pretty Hair and Gormizer here to bring you home for today's console competition. We've got two team or two two matchups left here for the day. We put our most exciting one, I think, to bed, or at least the setup for the most exciting one next week, right? Because now we've got these two tied teams. Yeah. It's going to come down to week <laughs> five, and we were talking about how it's so surprising to see that happen in North American Xbox as well, of all the regions. Especially with how dominant we have seen that region be, like worldwide when it comes to console wars, they're always the one that is like, the one team that happens to win that wins it all every yep. single time. So Onslaught, not only not as far ahead, I guess, as we would have thought, Flashpoint has kind of shown that it's not always going to be North American Xbox, so there's so much in the air. Well, let's get into the maps for our second to last set of the day here. It'll be the Oni Chaners versus warm up. Ascension Peak is our first map selected. Warm up band outs don't keep. The Oni Chanas got rid of Frog Isle as we head to what traditionally is a, a fairly long map, yeah, at yep. least historically, but the one time we've seen it today, it was over very, very quickly. This is one of those maps that when you have it, like, again, I, I mentioned this with Ice Mines earlier as well, and there's a good example for Ascension Peak. If you have a big enough skill gap between the two teams, it doesn't matter what the map should do, it's going to tend to be a 4-0, and I think that's kind of going to be the case here. Oni Channers right now are incredibly <laughs> strong, but Koga notably has had a yeah. really, really good performance today. Andro Talison Ooh. coming through to respond to it. Ah, this is what I want to see, though. The Oni Channers, the you favorite team in this matchup, here. letting the Koga through and putting on display, how do you beat it? Yeah, and being able to showcase one thing that I think has been a long time coming. And they just forget about Frontliners for a little bit. It becomes the flank show, at least for the first three. Yeah. But Inara, I mean, Makoa making it all the way down to six is not something you typically see. But Oni Channers are pretty much right on par with where they want. With no Torvald, they're going to have to be a little bit more worried about both of their flanks helpful. Yeah. But the damage output, especially with Luminary on top of it, is going to be insane from them. It's surprising, isn't it? Because you look at the Solar Blessing and the Inara, the two things that are kind of defining the PC meta at the moment, and two things that have been very, very strong. That is something that can easily be executed on console. It's yeah. like arguably one of the few like high-level things about the PC meta game and the core of that meta that can be executed as well on console. Yeah. But it's just not the case here it's not what these guys are defining their game by guys go ahead cast your votes now in the mixer poll in chat let you know who you think is going to take this one do you dare vote against koga here i mean do you vote against koga drogos because i mean when it comes down to the damage oni channers are better players but it feels like draft wise theirs yeah. is not anywhere near as strong and that is when we do see top teams end up getting toppled down at least for a map just because sometimes you can lose it all in the draft. Certainly, certainly. We'll have to see if that's the case here today. It is a strong draft, and that's why we always ask on paper who we like better. Atomic Boom, he's picked up the Defiant Fist talent today. And it will be Adrenaline Junkie for Geppetto. Not exactly the, the standard choice for young Strix. Tommy Jet goes for the crack shot, Defiant Fist. <laughs> Adrenaline Junkie, I mean, this is a lot of uh, talent selections here that are not exactly standard. Defiant Fist has been slowly on the rise. Oh. Essentially, this update He's is what skin, might dude. be bringing it in, and now oh. we have Googly Eye Talus from Swiper. Poggers, dude. This gun is oh. probably one of my favorites overall in terms of what this eyeball will do. It's sitting right there. Let's <laughs> wait for him to fire in a position where you can see it. It's awesome, man. And uh, I have to say... He, he said his like opening game line, and I was like, what the hell is that? Is that line? I've never heard that line. And no one wants to vote against Koga here. Warm-up have received 100% of the votes, despite Onichanos historically being the stronger team. Out of the gate, Onichanos with a small lead on the objective, now turning into a bigger size lead as they move up 51% to three. And this is just good old-fashioned control, Atomic Boom does get taken down in the process, and actually by Drogos, which normally that matchup goes the other way around, but pressure from Swiper in the back line has been crea created so much space for Oni Channers to be able to just step forward and take up any room that might be in their way, but that 51% starting to get easily matched and passed here by Warmup, who even though they haven't been getting too many kills, have been able to slowly push back Oni Channers. 
slow and steady indeed. 63 to 51 percent now. Flank versus flank action. Swiper the one will come out on top. Double kill now for Swiper as he navigates his way successfully this time to the back line. And Grover next in his sight. Blitz up just to find an R here. And now he'll be able to lay into the Grover. Mining away to safety for the time being. Swiper the one. Happy with the way that turned out when it's all said and done as the googly eye continues to bounce around in glorious fashion. As of right now, <laughs> look at the, it go, man. The way they're countering Koga has just been killing whenever you get the opportunity. Swiper just shredding through people. We've seen this now twice today. Vitalis has been an incredible pickup. Whirlwind was popped right there. Grover trying to get aggressive and come in, but it is not enough to save his team. Blitz up was right under Drogos here from up high as well. You have to thank Tommy Jet there. He lands a big shot that helps save Swiper's life. And we'll be the only Chonners with the first payload here of the day in this set. Warm up now trying to take some offensive positioning up here in the temple. Tommy Jet clearing the way for the boys, letting them know if there's any danger afoot. Swiper gets the all-clear and heads on through. Headshot opens things up as well. Look at the tag team of Talus and Strix going to work. And that's the damage duo, although this time they have a damage trio. But you set it up pretty much perfectly where it's just, I'm going to get a poke. If you're Strix and you get a good headshot, 1800, it's not going to kill anybody. But you add in an Androxus or a Talus to that equation, all of a sudden they're going to die as long as they can get into the back line. And this kind of double composition or double oh. damage is just beautiful. And Tommy Jet's playing it real well. He is dropping the hammer onto his opponents at the moment. Two headshots that have resulted in kills. And now a beautiful flank here. Damage all around. Sidesteps the enlightenment. Tommy Jet, dear God, on the Strix on Ascension Peak. We know snipers have been a big topic of conversation on PC on this map, but never on console. And even on PC, we have never seen a sniper be this effective during the payload push. I mean, this was a hell of a round from Tommy Jet. 8 and 2 there for Swiper, 4 and 4 for Tommy Jet, but top damage by a relatively big margin overall for Tommy Jet. A lot of good headshots and a lot of good just pressure, I want to say. Where he's positioning everything he's been able to find has been solid. And like you said, not something that we typically get to see on console from a sniper, but that's actually been kind of the big question mark for Frog Isle. A yeah. lot of these teams have been banning Frog Isle and not wanting to deal with it because not only do they have a good sniper, but they recognize there are a lot of other teams here that are getting good snipers, and it's just not worth the effort. But if you can pull one out and make it work on a map like this, that swings things in your favor. It certainly makes things easy for your flankers as well to only have to deal the last 100 or 2 damage of a, of a target's HP pool. Tommy Jet, ooh, <sighs> making it easy, and Genos trying to throw in... Uh, his hat for a top sniper of the game as well. Not going to be able to connect, though, with that ultimate. Dragon Punch comes in, and it will find the other shutter. But he was already pretty low in the first place. Like he said, coming through. This is actually going to be one of his first games on this team, and it's looking pretty good. Geppetto being able to find a couple kills as well. Does get taken down by Tommy Jet. Double kill for the Strix. But it's just too wow. little, too late for Oni Channers. Dude, that was like literally the fastest capture, I, like feeling wise. Like, I feel like we just started to cast that fight, and it already is captured here. Comeback mechanic going to work for warm up. They will be able to get a point on the board here. And the Oni Channers just, just right in between the eyes before they really even knew what was happening. It was too late. Now, the push coming through. This is not something you typically will see get pushed. That is something that Oni Chanders took by the phenomenal round win in their favor. But right now, it's a solid start for warm-up. And this is almost uncharacteristic. I mean, this team has not had this many good moments in a row like this, especially against a team like Oni Chanders. So being able to bring it up is incredible. Yeah, Drogo's just trying to fall back here, but the pressure is simply too great. Tommy Jet, Swiper, both combining to find a lot of pressure here. These two looking very, very strong. Out of the gate here for the Oni Chaners. A strong defensive hold. First fight after the payload was captured goes the way of Oni Chaners. And they'll be able to just kind of sit on their laurels for a little while. Not a big deal, though. If you're warm up, you get to go home and spend those credits anyway. Exactly. 300 from that capture can swing things a little bit in your favor. I'm more interested in really what Koga is going to try to accomplish. Because again, earlier we saw him just demolish people. And at the beginning of that round, I feel like Geppetto kind of let him loose. But it feels like so far, Oni Chainers have kind of kept him controlled and corralled. Kept him locked down just enough where he's not been able to get too many kills, except with the rare occurrence of a double kill so far. Ooh. 
Locking it down, my goodness. Like we said, it's uh, it's certainly a lot easier for Swiper if he only has to deal the last hundred or so HP. Tommy Jet, dear lord, this guy looks just so comfortable on Strix and on the controller, no less. He's killing it. I mean, this is a pick that, when it comes up, I say is a red flag. Snipers are always going to be a red flag for me because I've seen so many teams, even with top performers, like Ricotta, lock in a sniper and then just not have the game, right? Not be able to be there. So it's always something that I think at the beginning, it's at least in the drafting phase, you need to be a little worried about if you're a fan of the team that picked it. But then you get to see a performance like this. So Tommy Jet making sure that you can say, well, Strix is definitely a pick for Oni Channers and definitely something that you can expect to see in the future. Last couple of seconds of the round here. Swiper unsuccessful in his backline dive, but it will be Tommy Jet following it up this time around. Overtime is burning. Look at all of these little chickens in the corner right for the plucking. But not just yet here. Geppetto answers back with one of his own business and Garcia all finding kills. Geppetto dancing around this Strix in the back line and look at him go. Getting some nice little 180 spins. Not the easiest thing to do on the controller either, but Geppetto looking very, very nice. Maybe it's those new aim settings coming yeah. through. Having a bit of an effect in combination with the Master of Arms nerf on PS4. Making this adrenaline junkie look better and better. And with the way things are going, I mean, that payload went from probably not going in to still vi viable. Tommy Jet, though, does get rid of business. Now this matchup is going to be important. Geppetto going down there, I think, might seal the deal. You're now in what looks like a 2v5, essentially, from warm-up. That is just unfortunate. Geppetto gets that kill, though. You see this Koga come in behind, potentially pick up a couple more. A lot of that comes down to Swiper the 1. I think hitting just a couple more headshots overall. Both of them using as much burst, firing as fast as they can. Great shots here, man. And the crack shot talent put on display there. Whenever you Ooh. land a shot with the sniper, swap to the pistol. The pistol does bonus damage for the next couple of seconds. And the pistol, already one of the higher DPS weapons in the game, will absolutely tear up target to pieces with this talent selection. Tommy Jet, 11, 1, and 8. Nothing too outrageous. Dexterous switching to your <laughs> sidearm. Level 2, 40% though at a level 2 is still going to be a ton for It feels him. really good, yeah. But then you give his slash line a plus 1, you get Swiper, 12, 2, and 9. So both of them performing incredibly for this game. I love that he hasn't confused Crystals 4. Like the only thing that could possibly go better for him is just to have more bullets to shoot people with. That's the only thing. The positioning's good. And look at that. Finally connecting there. Where to Guap? Finds the big old snipe into the back line. Swiper's already found one. Boom, gets one as well with Androxus. Tommy Jet, the only one not to throw his name into the kill feed there. Tommy Boom being able to pick up a few. I feel like he's had a relatively quiet game, and it's because it's been this big push and pull between Talus and Strix. There's not been much room for the third damage. Androxus finally being able to kind of step up. And he hadn't had a bad game. It's just been quiet. So with the way he's holding it, especially with headshots like that, that is a clean pickup for the team. It's two kills in a row almost where it looks like it's uh, Atomic Boom who's landing the killing blow, but it's Tommy Jet sneaking it away from long distance. The Strix, I mean, looking very, very good. I think the MVP of that game for me personally. I think a lot of what happened for Oni Channers worked really well, and a lot of it does fall onto the Strix. But it is that push and pull, having the flanks to be able to clean up anything that you might not be able to, although he was hitting a lot of really good headshots in the yeah. process. So even if you weren't, I think I'll bonus to him because of how many shots he was hitting. Well, let's move things right along there. Central Peak, a lot of fun to watch there from the Oni Channers. Despite not getting a single vote in the Mixer Chat poll, they pull out the victory 4-1 to one here. Bright Marsh will be game number two here. They let the Koga through and they defeated it. Is there anything at this point that can stop the Oni Chargers? I feel like this map might be a little bit of a different story. Just because when it comes down to where Koga can be effective, I think this map gives him more cover, a lot more room to kind of move around without having to use his dashes. And I think that might make him a little bit stronger overall. But will Oni Channers ban him or will they keep him? They have a chance know. for first pick. They certainly do. Kogo would be a pretty good one. Can you feel me? I can feel you. Kogo would be a good pick. Kogo would be a good pick. Unless me, they Jack? just don't care. Jack, can you feel me? They, don't they want just it, don't though. care. They let the Willow <laughs> ones. They want they Willow. Warm up. <laughs> they have a chance to grab the Inara and the Koga here. Koa's still on the board. Fury's still on the board. Plenty of big picks. Drogo's still on the board. We'll have to see. Picking the litter here. Warm up. 
They like to go for the talents, taking that away from swipe for the one. But that's not a sentence that ever, I think, ends up well for the person trying to knock Swiper off balance. And you give Swiper something that we got to see a few weeks ago. He still can go for the Koga. Like, Koga still isn't picked. So if they want it on the side of Oni Channers, it's still available. Are you going to go for the double flank? Are you going to go Talus and Koga? I don't if know, you're warm up? I think it's worth clarifying that. So this is a PS4 set. So this is on patch 1.6. So this is yes. with the Master of Arms nerf and the Claws buff. But the Claw buff, I think, is still going to be inconsequential. Um, Give me one game of all does, Claws. Does Koga go from perma ban to, to not picked anymore? <laughs> just not picked. Just like, mm, yeah, no. Um, that would be sad. I mean, I feel like Adrenaline Junkie is still going to be the style. I, at this point, I think it is the style if you're going to try to run him. But you have to figure out a couple more things about him. I feel like he's still trying to find his home in terms of can I actually use my claws? Like, are they going to be useful or am I just an SMG machine? Mm -hmm. Well, the final pick being hovered here for a warm up, and it will be Zin with the Genos Makoa. I like this lineup. I got to be honest, I really do. Strong, nice little 3 DPS comp here from warm up. Let's go ahead and throw out the poll in chat, guys. Cast your vote for who you're liking on paper at the moment. Given Oni Chowner's victory in game number one. I like this comp from him. I think it's a, it's a nice counterbalance to this 3 DPS comp from warm up. I think it's going to be a relatively passive composition with two safe but lethal backliners in the Leon and the Willow. I need to see what Talus buys before I think I can cast my vote for either side just because I feel wow. like All right. I think Ruckus is going to cause a Ruckus for Oni Channers. He's going to do a lot of work unless Talus goes for a Wrecker, in which case I feel like Ruckus might immediately fall off just depending on how warm up can play it because shredding that shield mm. early on makes a big difference but at the beginning tommy jet he has nothing to worry about especially the only record coming through on drogos i feel like he's not usually the one you expect to see trying to burst down his shield so tommy jet i'm not sure has a lot to worry about i agree man i think talus is one of the couple of matchups that i actually like in a 1v1 against ruckus i think he's one of the few guys that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the absolute beast that is Ruckus. And when he gets his shield unmitigated, that's like a 7,000 HP champion that's doing 1,000 DPS coming at you. Very difficult to deal with. Geppetto, no care in the world for Anar. He is hunting for a nice backliner. He's hunting for the Ruckus. But he gets sent back to his rune of travel rather quickly. IQ does get taken down in the process as well. So the one with Wrecker is no longer available. Tommy Jet can use that key to just go ahead and get as aggressive as you want. You're in a beautiful position, especially with all his cooldowns coming back for him. He can just hold this angle, especially with Leon right next to him, and it should be a relatively clean hold. 90% already for Oni Champs. There it is. Koa's going to dive onto the objective here, but Anara is still so healthy. 96% on the objective. Looks like it will be them that is able to just get this first payload captured. Oni Chaners with a very difficult to displace composition. We'll take this first objective of the game. Beautiful stuff there as they will go on the offense first. Now getting as aggressive as they possibly can. 60% on the enlightenment, but that payload moving forward is going to make, I think, the bigger difference. Garcia kind of in this awkward position, trying to figure out where he can go. Makoa, not normally the one pushed to be on defense, but it's one of the most unfortunate positions I think you can find yourself in. And with a triple DPS, if he goes down, that loses a lot of room here for warm up. So now a couple of shots and he goes out. That's going to make it very difficult for anyone, even Tico, to be able to kind of step up and find a kill, any pressure, anything to hold on. A lot of kills coming through here. Three for nothing so far. And Leon, Atomic Boom, zips, zopping around in this room, getting the better end of the business here as he takes down Zin. Keeps his ultimate online as well. Usually you see Leon's use that in the 1v1 to come out on top of other flank champions. The other shutter heads right up to the enemy spawn. <laughs> drops the warder's field down right next to the wall so you can actually get that pressure out nice and early as they come out of their spawn doors. Here comes the Talus ultimate, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. They're, they're bordering on leaving this payload uncontested. It could slide through here if Red is not careful. If they had been able to at the right time, where to Guap potentially could have vined to dude. the payload and pushed it in. But, I mean, you have a minute left, and it's still sitting pretty much right on where it needs to be. Nothing too big to worry about. A couple of good kills from warm-up. 
But a couple of kills, especially against a team like Oni Tanners, just means they go back and spend all the credits they got from the capture, from all the kills they've been able to get from sitting on the payload as long as they have. A lot of that just means that they're going to come back stronger. So yes, you did it once, but honestly, you just have to do it again, and can you, is the question. One more time here. Geppetto will go out for his little backline dive, finds the support, opens up. Where to Guap goes down. Success for Geppetto. He dives and finds the enemy healer. Runa travels back to safety. Nara is dredge anchored into trouble here. She'll be able to bail herself out just too tanky at this stage of the game with or without her support. She can get to the enemy back line and back to safety all on her own. Atomic Boom being able to find Geppetto does make it a lot easier for someone like Anara to come through. A stun oh, going to come baby. out, and it takes Drogos out of the air. They Woo! find the kill on the two, and now the payload's moving right back up the hill. I really like what I'm seeing from the other shutter here, man. He is not afraid to get aggressive when it matters most, and really, he just spearheads that charge. He blasts home a stun onto two. Would have been three targets. He gets the counter cooldown out from Zinn, and it's just so easy at that point for the Oni Chaners. Very nice stuff from the front line. And being able to take Drogos down, that's one of the few ults that Drogos is not hit by that often because it's going to hit the ground, and right. not often are you going to be within its radius, I guess, to the splash upwards. Mm -hmm. You can fly around. You're on a roof. You're sitting up high. So IQ getting kind of shut down right there and pretty much the best way possible for Oni Channers because they follow up with two, three kills. I think all of them end up yes. dying. So you put on the pressure, not necessarily the cleanest round. You pick up a few deaths, but item wise, as well as just capture point wise, you are in complete control. You can see a lot of Havens coming out here. That's going to really do a, a lot of work to slow down Geppetto, direct damage reduction as the other shutter just zooming around on the objective. Still on his horse. Finally actually hit with something. Dismounted. Wall goes up. Locking in Makoa and Zin. Where's the follow-up there? TKO Ghost lands a beautiful time and space to swat Willow off the high ground. The Whirlwind's not enough to keep Tommy Jet alive. IQZ finds that kill. Other shutters still in the objective. Still very healthy. But I think Warm-Up's doing a really good job at just ignoring the other shutter at this point. Being able to just leave them alone. And this is part of the reason Inara is so strong and so weak. If you can keep the point contested or keep other Shutter or Inara just off the point, then you can ignore her. But if she's sitting on there uncontested, that's going to be a 90% in your Ooh, face that you have to worry wall. about. Dragon Punch goes over, still finds Tommy Jet, not the Inara he was looking for, but still a one for one trade. Indeed, not the Inara he was looking for. I think that's the important thing about that statement. And look at this, Swipe of the One dives the back line on Willow, finding both business and the forward pressure here. On to Talus as well, almost gets the kill with the Nightshade. 75% for the Oni Chaners, fluttering up to the high ground now. Swipe of the One looks to lock down this pressure for his squad. Inara's on the objective, Inara's uncontested, and the Oni Chaners grab yet another payload. Swiper holding a beautiful angle here on the Willow. Boop. Nice little tap towards the end to get rid of the Jogas as well. And this is pretty much where Willow likes to live. Just slightly above everyone else, right? You can see the battlefield be beautifully. You can throw your seedling, you can aim your dead zone and have it impact probably the most from up here. Oh, yeah. Plus, with splash damage, you can just hit two, three people at a time. That's the good stuff there, boys. Two minutes on the clock here. Tommy Jet in some trouble. The Ancient Rage is forced out, wailing away on, on Inara. And the shell spin damage. The big, I believe, God, I don't even really remember. I think it's like 100 or 150 damage that Shell Spin does. It's able to actually kill her. You don't see it often, but when you do, <laughs> you just love to see it. It's no 720 McCall, but I'll take it. No 720 Ancient Rage, that's right. But Still not trying. everyone can be William. This is such an awkward Except angle you. to try and hold. You can I can be William. <laughs> In fact, I almost always am. I know, I didn't get a choice either. Just, <laughs> that is how it is. It is what it is, baby. Dead Zone actually connects on IQZ mid-air. Beautiful shot there from Swipers. Two more come through. The hook lands, but, I mean, Garcia can't even pull in his target before he's taken down by Swiper. The Oni Chaners, one game up. Three points in game two. Looking to make it an even 4-0 here on the Bright Marsh. The other shutter already up in the enemy spawn. Going to work, trying to keep everyone zoned out here. There will be a small contest, but will the kills happen for the warm-up to be able to stabilize? The answer looks like it's a resounding no as the 5 for 0 sweep comes through and the Oni Chaners claim the set. As will the kills come out for Oni Chaners? Yes. Will they come out for warm-up? Absolutely not. No. They lost all five members literally <laughs> right as you said that. It's, 
the unfortunate position of they have to jump down, they have to get in there, a Hexafire meets their fate. Like, every single amount of damage that Oni Chanters can throw into pretty much one area, they put down. There it is, guys. We've got one more set on the docket for you guys today as that one comes to a close.